Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. This is your brother Fat Boy Fish, and we got we got a little bit of topic for today. I wanted to discuss some matters, and I would like to give special shouts out to all my brothers and sisters who appeared to the nine o'clock twelve hour. You know you that you in my prayers. I ask that everyone comes and be in attention. Come give some of them good prayers out. Send them some of them good prayers to your father. Let them know how much you love him. Show him your submissives. Show him that you're willing to give him up your time because that is what he is asking of us. And I asked if if you really want to grow an intimate relationship with the pro, with the father, you must submit. You ain't no getting around that family. You must su submit to the father's will on your life and what he is asking. And this is the perfect moment in time. I got to record on two different devices because I don't know how this is going to play out for me. But this is the perfect time to show your submission to the father, what you are willing to do. And to be an assembly with your brothers and sisters who love the father the way that you do. All glory given to the most high who sits on the crown that lasts forever. A throne that lasts for now and Forever, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no ending to his power because his power is all great. Now, we had a little bit of a topic that I wanted to get into for today. And the premise of this show for today will be... Because hmm, we're going to break it apart in three different parts. And the first one would be prophecy. Prophecy in time. So we're going to cover that. Then you know your brother. I got my side notes that I got to throw up in there. But everything is, is relevant to the same thing. So it really doesn't matter if it's side notes or prophecies. And then we have, is it important to know the true color of Jesus? So we're going to go over all of these certain things. And once more again, as we go through these things, I want you to, to get your own opinion of what you think or what you feel about the matters. You might have to do a little bit more depth in research. Where's my penny at? I know I had a penny around here. Give me one second, family. I'm sorry. There you go. Okay, this is... Let's go ahead and get into the... the, the is it important to know what is the true color of the Messiah, the Lord and Savior? You refer him to as Jesus Christ. We refer to him as Yeshua, but it is the same man that we are referencing to. Now, family, now, this is a penny. This is a penny right here, right? And as you can see that it blends in with my skin, right? Minus... Minus the flash of the light. Now, just imagine if this same penny was a little bit darker. It'd be a little bit darker than me, huh? But this penny, it matches the skin color of what I am, right? And if it was burnt in a furnace, it would be a little bit more darker. Now, I don't know no Caucasian people who are this color, the color that I am and all the people that I know. All my people who live in here in America, they're either this tone darker or a little bit lighter, but it is all similar. I don't know that this would be considered to be, what do they call it, olive colored skin. It looks brown to me, the same color that I am. And this is what the color the Lord is, a darker brown than this copper penny that I am holding. So let's go ahead and get into that because that's very important before we start because a lot of people like to discredit. Oh, it said that he's an olive color, complexion color. I don't know no Jesus of that color family. Now... If you if you if you got to turn Jesus to be Asian for you to believe in the Messiah, then I guess. But then that's still it's still racism behind. Why would you need to change the color? But we're going to get it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get into all of this. But remember, the last one we'll be doing today is prophecy. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you why. They changed the color of Jesus. We're going to talk about it. What is the importance to know what the true Messiah is? Now, what is, what is, how can I put this? What will happen if you know who the true Messiah is? Right off the top, you will change in your aspect on how you look at life. You will. Either you white, black, you're going to change how you feel about the things that you was taught growing up in this world. So let's go ahead and get into this, family topic for today does it matter what color jesus is it does matter it matters a whole lot so let's go ahead and get into this there is only one true jesus and i say here today who do you think he really the real jesus is before no before in our past before we was seen as people 
fake believers in Christ made people fake book I'm sorry family let me just go ahead and take it to the top there is only one true Jesus and I say here today who do you think the real Jesus is before in our past we was seen as as people fake believers in Jesus made people think it was okay to enslave dehumanize rape murder slaughter torture brutalize using resi using re religion permitted grounds for the torment of so-called african-american people of north america but we all know that this religion was wrong but not only did they use christianity as a ground to keep my people in bondage they also taught in their churches and congregations that my people were cursed by god that was partially true not the full truth we are cursed by the most high yah but not over the 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 skin color so the question was asked does it matter if jesus is black and does it matter for t it matters for two different reasons for the true children it means freedom from the oppression of the treatment of my people black people in america in America cause by the most high's word he would set us free above all nations but the rest of the people of the world would be judged for the treatment of the so-called black people God's chosen people God set apart people so look at this my brothers and sisters and it's in its entirety of not just America's to keep you in the dark about your identity and the oppression and segregation and dehumanization but God said he would bring judgment on all who have inflicted God's chosen people so let me stop right there because it's only a little bit more to go so as long as people in this country feel that Jesus is white, they will have they will have the mindset to oppress black people in this country. And by them oppressing black people in this country, they believe in the fake Jesus. And in that same process, since they don't believe in the true Messiah, they are doomed to go to hell. That's why when I look back at the history of the white people in this country and the things that they believe like a lot of y'all preachers and pastors they set y'all up for failure because look at how y'all act look at how y'all treat God's chosen people and if you were to treat God's chosen people righteously there will be no judgment on America now these words are a little bit of my own but it's still the interpretation of what God is saying about his chosen people now black people of America if they knew that they was the chosen people they would act accordingly they would follow his laws his statutes and commandments and by them serving only one god that would force the hand of god's judgment now we're going to talk about that in prophecies but from what the father said if all of his children hearken to his words and his laws and his rules that he would bring a judgment on america so anybody who would oppress the chokers we're still being oppressed right now the chosen people of God because we live in America and therefore we're still being oppressed so by us being in this country and we're not recognizing that we're the chosen people of God we have to wait all the way until God brings his judgment but if all of God's chosen people black people of America was to believe in one God serve one God the most high Yah and do all the things that our father is requiring of him of of him he would instantaneously bring a judgment on all nations who have persecuted God's chosen people and that is black people of America so as you look at other people who don't believe in the real Jesus family they're doing their job they are doing their job because the more that they don't believe they keep you in bondage they keep you oppressed because they know it is in their best interest to keep you in bondage to keep you in the dark of who you are because if you know who you are and you did all that was according to what our father the most high Yah, is asking of us the lord of hosts of what he is asking of all of us to serve him then it would bring judgment on america and america does not want to be judged so therefore she's doing her job by spending billions of dollars yearly to keep you fighting to keep you arguing to keep you fussing to keep you 
uh, turning your neck on your own brothers to keep you in feud with your own people to keep your mind off of God. Now, 400 years ago, if it was illegal for you to know the truth that I'm telling you now, this is where this is what kept things going in the process that it is. But God is saying in his word and we all know his word is true. We all know his word is true, right? So whatever he says, it happens. So you can look at America and the treatment that she does to black people. She's doing that to survive. It's in a must for America's best interest to suppress black people and keep them in bondage and keep them oppressed. Because if she doesn't, she dies. If she does not keep you, sisters and brothers, at each other's throat, fighting over resources, fighting just to get a job, to have the things that you have in this world. If she doesn't do that and promotes all of this through her TV, through her radio, the oppression of black people in this country, we're not here to play games. Don't act like this is something that is not happening. This is very much happening. Besides from the other fact of her killing you, you know what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters of her putting up different guys to destroy you and kill you slowly, but she's doing her job. So I can't be mad at America because America wants to survive. She wants to survive. And the only way that she can survive is to suppress black people of America, the so-called black African-American, the true children of God, us. She's doing her job. If she does not, then she is judged. So look at your oppression and look at all the things that your country do to you, black man and black woman, my brothers and sisters out there in the world, and know if America does not do the things that she does to you, she is judged. Her time is at an end. We as black people, we can make, we can forward her judgment right now if we was only willing to hearken to the words of the Most High Yah, Father of all creations of the heaven of the earth and the beginning of the end. If we hearken to the Most High and do what we supposed to do by praising Him, honor, honoring Him, worshiping Him, and Him alone, then the judgment will come. So you see how how bad America is fighting to keep you separated, to keep you apart. It's not it's not just on us as black people why we we do the things that we do. It's because of America and the things that she has implanted and enforced on your people here in this country. Now this is the truth. It comes out of God's word, and then it's mixture with my own me explaining what is happening. So I sit here today in this chair as a truthful man and I tell you the truth. So I say to my brothers, my brothers and sisters out there who listen to this word that it's in America's best interest to oppress black people because if she don't, it's her destruction. It is in the best interest of so-called black people to love their own people because it will forth the judgment of this land. Father, Father Yah said that he would judge all nations who afflicted and oppressed our people. It doesn't matter just America, but all nations will be judged. Okay, let's keep on reading because I felt that I have explained it very, very well for you to be able to understand. Okay, what do we leave off at? The Most High Yah, He would set us free above all nations, but the rest of the people of the world would be judged for the treatment of the so-called black people, God's chosen set apart people. So look at this, my brothers and sisters, and it, it is in the interest of all of America to keep you in the dark about your identity and the oppression, the segregation, the dehumanization. But God said he would bring judgment on all who have inflicted God's chosen people. So you can say by the state, the state you see our people in the only thing hot holding back the hand of wrath is his chosen people don't recognize that we are his holy people so we go our ways and are still cursed by the most high yah because we refuse to honor to respect to glorify to praise to love all on one accord that what that's why to d this day we suffer as a whole so this is why family this as you look at our people and you look at the, the the ghettos and the hoods and all that inflect your people just the inflection the inflection of your people is all because we don't want to serve the most high yah the more we go away from yah is the more bad we become the more curses will befall us the more suffering the more agony the more misery so the more we separate ourselves from the most high yah is the most 
that we get closer to destruction. That's why the father said that it would only be a remnant. That's why you always hear your brother saying, not all my people going to make it because they choose not to serve God. They choose not to follow him. They choose not to follow his laws, his statutes and commandment. And I hate when people sit there and say that God, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, punish the people. That's a lie that you have been lied to. Not only do God curses people, but he curses a group of people. Now, we under the curses because we his chosen people and we choose not to serve him. So I don't like it when people lie to y'all and say, well, God won't curse a whole group of people. Now, at the beginning of this, I told you white folks lied to you and they said that you were cursed by God. Now, that wasn't that entirety of the truth. You are cursed because you didn't want to serve God. Now, it's, it's no different than the than the past. We still don't want it. That's why we curse. But they lied and said that it's because of your skin color. No, it's because of the fact that we are God's chosen people and we do not want to hearken to his laws, his statute, his judgments and commandments. That's why we are cursed. Now, it was a partial truth of what they told us in the beginning. But as you look at this country and everything that goes on in this country, if we as black people choose to serve our father, the most high, the creator of the heavens and the earth, all on one accord, we're going to continue to be cursed as a whole. These curses just don't affect the, the, the Millbrook family or the Johnson or the Jones or the Williams or the Smith. It affects any black family here in this in this in America and I've proven it to you with the last show I did with generational curses we talked about God hating people for generations not only will he hate people for a generation he also hurt he hates groups of people he hates them family ain't no getting around that so for America as a group, a group of people not to be destroyed, she has to oppress you. She has to send you through everything that you go through. That's why it is so important to know the true, the true color of Jesus. By white people knowing the true color of Jesus, they would have to respect and love black people because we're God's chosen people. Without them knowing the true color, they fathom in their head that they are the chosen people because they've been lied to so many different times by they fake phony preachers and, and anybody who was elected over them in times past to keep the status quo the way that it is now and the machine running the way of racism and greed and all of that running the way it is now. So they've been lied to, but the truth have been given to some of them. But the ones who serve the most high, Yah, I think that I, I just think that it's not in the Bible. I think that they will be spared. But as a whole in the group, they still have to be punished. Now, you don't like the You don't have to like the things that I'm saying. You don't have to understand. You don't even have to agree with them. All I ask is that you forge your own opinion on what you think these matters is, because not just because you have my own thoughts in here. These are actual words that God said would come to pass. So it's on you. Now, I believe it was a little bit more on this. It's just a little bit more on this. Now, we talked about the penny, right? Now, this is directly out of your Bible. Uh, Revelations chapter 14 and chapter 15. His head and his hair were like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes was like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass and refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. So it said his head was his woolly. Now, we all know black folk got woolly hair. And we, when we get older, when you start seeing all that white come out, that's what it's talking about from the top of his head, from the top of his head to his beard and everything. It was white as snow. It said his eyes were a burning, a burning red, but brown is the closest to red as you possibly can get. And if you look at black people's eyes, they're a dark brown, but it's damn near reddish. That's your Lord once again. Now it said his skin was the color of. Um, of brass that was put in the furnace. Now I showed you the penny on my face and if you can only imagine that penny being burnt just a little bit more and that will be the color of Jesus. Now is that the person who has blonde hair or blue eyes? Jesus ain't got no blue eyes. Jesus ain't got no bronze. He ain't got no blonde hair. He ain't got no white skin. He ain't got no olive complected skin. His skin color is darker than mine. You know what I'm saying? So 
by you believing in the fake Jesus once more again, you're going to look down at that at, at my people, black people of America, God set apart chosen people, and you won't give them the respect that's needed. And if you're not giving them the respect and you're hating them, we all know there is no hatred in heaven. So by you not believing in the real Jesus, you condemn your own self to hell by not wanting to believe. So when, when other white pastors come on the shows and they talk about there is no importance in a Jesus, you can all be grafted in and all you have to believe. But white people, they believe in a white Jesus and they think superior. They get the mindset of thinking that they're superior. So by them believing in this fake phony Jesus, they condemn their own self to hell by mistreating and oppressing black people, the chosen people of God. So I just had just a little bit more on that topic. Now in the past, their their fake their their fake Jesus let them do any of their evil imaginations with no cost, but the same cost will imprison them in the end, because we all know that they did not serve the real savior. So does it matter? Is Jesus black? Yes, because only one is the real and the other is is the Antichrist leading so many people to hell gates by its own false religion and going against black Jesus, the real Messiah, you will perse you persecute God's chosen people and make them make they make themselves a murder to their own beliefs. Believing in false Jesus brings them to hellfire for not serving the true Jesus. So does it matter what color Jesus is and race is the only reason why so many Americans will not serve the real Jesus even though they are in danger of hellfire for serving they serve the the creature not the creator this is what's stopping them from god's kingdom hatred of god's chosen people so-called black people of north america there is no evil in the kingdom of god so just like i said over over again just by them believing in the fake jesus and he's a fake jesus because the fake jesus lets you do any of um, any evil imaginary thing of your heart look what they did in the past look how they tortured and raped and sodomized and sold little boys and lo little girls for rum for um for for rum for barrels of for barrels of alcohol and liquor look how they pleasured themselves with the the work of the slaves and how they beat them how they raped them how they killed them how they hanged them off of trees how they got drunk and just want to kill and beat up on black people so by them believing in the fake jesus allowed them to do all of the monstrosities towards the real chosen people of god and if they carry forth that same ideology of them believing in the fake Jesus still causes them to go to hellfire because they choose to serve the creature and not the creator. That's what they're doing by serving the false, the false Jesus who is in all in entirety is the Antichrist because it's the spirit of the Antichrist to do any uh, evil imaginary thing of their hearts. So by saying that, they endanger them own selves to hellfire. Now we went over all of it, family. That's why it's so important for you to believe in the true Messiah, the, tr the true Jesus. Because if you don't, and we talked about it all last week, you see how fast, you see how fast so-called people who say that they believe in Christ are so given into their own sin and how they sur how they sur they surround themselves with lies and deception and deceit. And they back to doing evil all over again because there is no remission of sin and the true Jesus having entered into their lives and they still carry forth all of this evil like there is nothing wrong and all I have to do is believe in the fake Jesus and I'll be forgiven that's why they do the things that they do but, but remember what your brother told you is that it is in America's best interest to keep you suppressed because if she doesn't she is judged plain and simple family plain and simple there is no getting out of that now I hope that you all can hear my voice. I'm recording on two different devices to see if this will go. We made it through the first. Does it matter what color Jesus is? Yes, it does really matter. And you got to think to yourself, are you willing to follow after the false Messiah? 
Are you are you willing to follow after the false antichrist spirit that leads so many people to the to the gates of hell to the gates of hell with deception and believing that all of their sins and are forgiven and and they constantly give in to the evil that they do even more? So you got to ask yourself, who is the real? I know I said this last time, but you got to ask yourself, who is the real Jesus? Real Jesus is not going to have you hating, killing, murdering, stealing, plundering. That goes against everything that God stands for. That's how you know that that is the fake Jesus. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the side notes for today because we're going to end this with prophecies. Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. Man, I thank y'all for coming to this 9 o'clock prayer hour to be in a symbol with your brothers and sisters who love the most high the way that you do to say prayers on the lost out there in the world that really need you, family. I told you, family, prayers go up. And life-changing events come on down to change the hearts and the minds and the hearts of all these people trapped up here in this world. They need your blessings. They need somebody to sit there and say something good on their behalf because they might not have that. And this is a two-way street. Not only do you help your people, you help yourself. And then you glorify your God at the same time. So it's a three-way street because it's all blessings and it's all a submission, an honest earnest heart to submit to your father and build this personal relationship that you need i told you on when you come around here there is no faking on god there's no phony ain't no faking we hit these topics head on you know what i'm saying to see how you stand and see where you feel that's why it's so important to gain this personal relationship you need because there is no there is no faking with god there is no phony in with god there's no plan no games of deceptions with the most high yah there is not. You either going to be 100 to him and bring yourself willingly or don't even come because you know the Lord to tell you something like this. Um, I wish you was cold or I wish you was cold or hot. At least I would know where you stand. But since you you don't believe, I will vomit you out of my mouth. The Lord will tell you something like that straight up when it comes to you submitting to your father. He's saying that you 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 not on either or side. You lukewarm. And just by you being the way that you are, I will vomit you out my mouth. So you know you don't know Jesus if you half assing it. There is no half assing it when you're trying to get into God's kingdom. You either going to be 100 to get in or are you not? So let's go ahead and finish now. This one, okay, this is side notes. Side notes for the day. What is the difference between God and the devil? Father, the almighty creator, and the devil. The devil is the father of all evil. The most high, you can provoke his anger with your actions and unrighteousness. The devil is always angry no matter what he does and he really gets mad when you serve the lord of hosts the god of creations so look at that statement right there what is the real difference between god and the devil so when you look at any person it doesn't really matter who it is god is peace god is love but god gets mad very angry i mean at the split of a second you can arise him you can provoke him to anger but he doesn't carry his anger like that he carries peace love grace be unto god's holy kingdom that's how he act the devil he's always angry he always mad he always miserable he always got something kicked off so when you see people and you want to know who the children of, of wrath really is these are the people who are always angry these are the people always fussing these are the people that's always mad they just like their father the um the devil he's always angry god doesn't walk like that see me i walk calmly cool complected but I carry madness. You can you can arise me to anger very, very, very quick, very, very, very fast. But I walk in love at the same time. I can discipline somebody with love and anger at the same time. And that is the way your father is. He'll discipline you with love and anger. You can provoke his wrath real fast. But the devil and his people, they angry, they mad, they despicable, they evil all the time. God's child. You can provoke him to anger, but he's still going to show you love at the same time as strict as she is. She's strict. She's about her business. 
but she's loving at the same time. Children of children of wrath don't know the meaning of what that means. They only carry themselves with evil all the days of their life. Now, by your love for the Lord of the hosts, your mind will be tested. Your will will be tested. Your body will be tested. Your heart will be tested. And your all of your actions will be toned to mock the Most High, the God of all creation. Now look at that statement. Now, if you say you love God, your mind will be tested. You will be you will be under you will be tested either attack or you will be tested on things in your mind. You will be tested on your will. What are you willing to do? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Period in your life so your will will be tested your body this body right here that's why it's so important to ask God just like every night I'm praying for God to strengthen the fruits of your body but it's mo it's very important my brothers and sisters out there for you to ask God to bless the fruits of this body right here because it will be under attack by the evil one and your heart what do you have inside of your heart all of these things will be tested amongst your actions. The evil that somebody might have inside of their heart, their actions and what they're doing with their will, their will in, in itself in its entirety will be tested in their mind if you say you love God. If you don't love God, you're not being tested. Your mind is not being tested. Your will is not being tested. Your body is not being tested. Your heart is not being tested. Your very actions are not being tested to mock God. Everything comes against you when you say that you love the most high. And these are the five things that you will be solely tested on. So you got to keep your mind sharp. You got to keep the things that you're doing in the will of the righteousness of the father. You can't keep no evil up in your heart because as soon as you give up into that evil, you're going to do some evil. The actions, all of your actions must be on the right path and right step of what God knows as righteousness. Because if it is not, you're doing evil. And you're doing someone else's will. But if you say you love God, this is how you know for certain. All of these things are being under attack. And it's been it's been tuned in for you to mock the Heavenly Father. So you got to fight, my brothers and sisters. This is our, our battleground. And this is the foundation that we have to stand on to fight. Our mind, our will, our heart. And what is the other one? Um, our actions. All of these things. Okay, work, works is dead, but by faith and following after the laws and the righteousness of, of God's behavior in the Lord is the only way to him you lead, you, you whom who laid the foundation of the earth. Now, we all know, family, I can go out that door today and I can do everything that is righteous, but I am not saved because I choose to do righteous. You have to be doing righteous to be in the Father's will for your life and to be doing good deeds to other people. But that alone, that is not going to make me get an automatic ticket to get into heaven. It is by my faith in the Father, believing that um, the Son died and rose on the third day believing in the Savior saving me, Yahshua saving me, that's the only way that I'm going to get into heaven. Now, I'm not saying not to do good deeds and do good works because your your reward is great in the kingdom. I'm just letting you know that we all fall short. We all fall short down here. We really do. So if you don't, if you're not doing good deeds, you still got to be righteous and following all these laws, these statutes and commandments because that builds your faith to believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and to believe that you will be saved by the Messiah by you following his laws, his statutes and his commandments. But just by you being good and doing righteous, you're not following God's laws. You won't be saved. You know what I'm saying? Works is dead, family. Works is dead. It's all on our faith. What are you believing in? Are you trying to walk on the righteous path that God wants you to walk on? Are you doing what's fair to yourself, your family, and to others? Are you living a righteous life as a man or a woman that's been placed on this earth to be righteous like the Father? You have to, family, because works is dead. Ain't no man in this world to be able to do enough good deeds to get into heaven. It is, excuse me, it is by the belief in the Savior and following his laws, his statutes, commandment, only, family only okay moving to the next one side note these are all side notes people fight with the fact that we're God's chosen people 
we fight with the fact that we guys chose the people. So not only not only is the rest of the people over here in North America fighting with the fact that we guys chosen people. I'm pretty sure if you go back back to Israel, you will see none none but people referring to us as guys chosen people. I'll be seeing all the different videos, them begging and pleading for us to come back home while they land is being trampled underfoot. But here in this country, people around us fight with the fact that the world is saying that we're God's chosen people and we as black people, we fight with the fact that we don't want either we don't want to believe it or we don't want to accept it. Either one or the other, either we don't want to believe it or we don't want to accept it. But there is a lots of us that are being awoke and accepting the fact that we are God's chosen people. Now, look at your boy. I only been awoke since 2014. Before that time, I was not awoke. Let's say 2012. Let's say 2012. God woke me up to be awoke to what's going on. Before that time, I did not know. I did not see it the way that I see it now. It'd be no way until God awoke in me. So I only been awoke for maybe five, six years now. Before that time, I was not awoke and I sought the world and I did the things that everybody in this world was so accustomed to doing and being a part of because the father did not awaken me. But when he awoke in me in 2000, I'm pretty sure it was 2000, let's say 2012, he awoke in me. I seen, I seen actually what's going on with my people and I seen that we are the chosen people of God. But he had to awaken. He had to take these scales off of my eyes. And even though I was in the word of God, I did not see it the way that I see it now. But after he awoken me, he awoken me to his truth and to his, his knowledge of who we are, what we are and what we're supposed to do. The more my people wake up and understand that they God's chosen people would be the end of any bad, harsh treatment because the most High has promised us so much and to do so much for us. So as I look at this statement, it is so true, family. The people around in this world, they fight with the fact that they know that we God's chosen people. And we ourselves as black, so-called black African-American people, we also fight with the fact that we don't want to accept the fact that we God's chosen people. But God, he will awaken his army for we are here. You know what I'm saying? God will awaken his soldiers for we are here now and we trying to reach our brothers. It's no telling how many people will be awoken to just this message alone, my brothers and sisters that's out there. That's why I say it's a beautiful thing, family. Okay, now um, moving on. Hell is not hard to find. It is right at the bottom of your feet. It's closer than you think. So a lot of people, a lot of people think hell is in a different dimension. Some people think that the sun would be the perfect place to put people who go to shell because that's what they call it they call it shell and they call it hates but we're we're calling it by the name that we know it as and that's hell so a lot of people think that hell is hard to find from what from what jesus said hell is right at the bottom of our feet family it's not that hard to find and a lot of people choose not to believe in that factor but as you look through god's word either they call it shell either they call it hates either they call it hell it has always been right at the bottom of our feet. So that's why I say hell is not that hard to find. Hell is right under us. I'm not going to be playing with the Father. I'm not going to be playing no games with him. I'm not going to be leading my people astray. I want all of the, his chosen people to make it into his kingdom. And as you can see, if you look down, if you if you stand up right now, just know that hell is right under you. I'm not playing with you. And you can go to that place if you choose not to serve the Most High Yah. I'm not going to play with him like that. For I know all of his words are true. Now, before we get into future prophecies, near future prophecies, because it is long. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and pump it out for today. But just know out of these future prophecies, when you when you dealing when you dealing with God's word and any prophecy, I really don't care what it is. The time span, it could either be a thousand years, 50 years, 10 years, a year, a day, an hour. Now, just keep that in mind from all of these things. Now, when a prophecy start happening, it's time in between as well. It could be 50 years. It could be 10 years. It could be 20 years. 
But just know, any prophecy that's according to God, it could happen today. All of these prophecies that we go over today, it could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen five years from now. It could happen 10 years to now. It can happen right at this very moment. There is not a person in earth, under earth, or in the heavens that know when these things will come to pass. Don't nobody know these things. But as you read God's prophecy, it gives you a timeline of what's happening, of how it all plays out, of future events that's coming along. And as I look at God's prophecy, there is no telling. These same prophecies that we go over today, it could be tomorrow. It could be five years from now. The, the first starting of these prophecies, it could be 20 years from now, or it could be the night family. You don't want to take no chances when you're trying to serve God and you're trying to do his will. Now, our master, he told us that we got to endure to the end, family, no matter no matter what it is to get the crown that the Lord Yeshua wants to place on your head. You must endure tribulations. And we all know that tribulations are hard. But then again, the father would never put us through a lot, a lot of tribulations that we would not be able to bear. But it still remains the same. The Lord said for you to make it to God's kingdom, you must endure the tribulations, bad times, family, however they might manifest in your own um, your own life. If these prophecies don't happen in your life, you still going to have to endure to the end and run a good race for the most high. Yah. You have to for the Lord of hosts, the God of all creations of the heaven and the earth, the alpha and omega. You have to run a good race. From your beginning of your life all the way to your end. Will these prophecies happen in your lifetime? They very much could, family. They very much could. They could because in his prophecies, all the elements of it is here. It's 2017. It can happen. You know what I'm saying? It can happen tomorrow. It can happen next week. It could happen five years from now. But all of these things could happen in a blink of an eye, in a twinkle of an eye. All these things can manifest down here on this earth. So don't take God's word lightly. And even though you might think it might be time in between these prophecies actually happen, just know that all these prophecies can happen tomorrow. They can. There is nothing stopping it. But the but the Lord, but the Lord, that's it. The Most High Yah, that's the only thing that's stopping it. Now, okay, let's go over. Now, these are near future prophecies. We might see this in our lifetime, family. We might see it tomorrow. We don't know. As a follower of God, you have to be patient and vigilant watching these signs to see how much closer we are to the end. Because as it look right now, all the elements of this prophecies are in this world here and now. Even though a lot of people don't like to admit it, a lot of people like to get your eyes on other things. But let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the sixth seal came from a great earthquake. The sixth seal came comes a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth and the moon became like blood and the stars of the heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops figs that has been shaken by a mighty wind. Now, this is how you know that the day of the Lord is soon approaching. What is said, there will be earthquakes in this world like this world has never seen before. The, um, the sun will become like sackcloth. That means you can only see like half of the sun. Then the moon becomes like blood and the stars of the heaven fall to the earth like figs. So to me, the, um, the moon turning like blood. If you ever go outside and you see the moon turned into blood, then you know the day of the Lord is upon us all. When you see, it says that the, the stars of the heaven will fall to earth. That could be asteroids falling to the earth family. But if it is written, it is going to happen. And what did it say? Like a fig tree shaking and a, and a mighty wind. So when you see all these asteroids falling to the earth, you know the day of the Lord is soon near. And just because all these things is happening doesn't mean it's it's going it's not going to be a set time to where oh the next thing is going to happen. They happen right after each other as well. Okay, the sky reduces as a scroll when rolled up and every mountain and island is made out of its place. The great kings of the earth 
and the great men and the rich men and the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and freed man hide themselves in the caves and the rocks of the mountain and say to the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. Now, you already see that's happening nowadays. You already see with rich people building all these homes up in these mountains and underground cities and they're preparing themselves because they know that's why I'm telling you all of these things are in the motion now for the end to begin and these are just signs that he is showing now the reducing as of, of the sky when it's rolled up every mountain and every island is is taken out of place so that goes fall back to what was said at the beginning with the great earthquakes that happened He's saying he's going to move every great mountain and every island out of this place. So when you see these things start to happen, you look at places like Hawaii and you look at um Japan and you see all the horrible things that's happening to them places in the past, in the last 10 years. You've seen all the bad stuff happening to them. But when you see these places move, then when you see the Rocky Mountain move, then you know that the day of the Lord is coming. These are all signs that we have to watch for, knowing and given what time that we're in. Okay, let's keep reading. The great day of God's wrath have came. Who is able to stand? The seventh seal, a angel took a bow with fire from a altar and threw it into the earth. And there was noise like thunder, lightning, earthquakes. So the seventh angel sounded and hell and fire fought um, fire fooled and mingled with blood and were through to the earth and a third of the trees were burned up all grass was burned up the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the living creatures in the sea were dead and a third of the ships destroyed then the third angel sounded and a great star fell down from heaven burning like a torch and fell into the rivers and springs of water and the name of the star is called wormwood and many men died because of the bitter water then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon was struck a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened And a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night angel warned the angel warns the inhabitants of the earth of the remaining blast of the three angels who were ready to sound off. The fifth angel sounded, and a star fallen from heaven to the earth to him was given the key to the bottomless pit and and smoke arose out of the pit and out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth and was given power as a scorpion and were commanded not to harm the grass, the trees, but to harm men who did not have the seal of the Most High Yah in their forehead, but to not, but was not given power to kill, but to torment them. Now, as you look at this part of history, and prophecy all these people have to do is turn to the most high yah repent of their sins love god follow his commandments they will not so it it still remains to this fact that i told you, my brothers and sisters a while ago some people were born to go to hell some people were born to go to heaven now you see these locusts they come out of the earth that have the power to to persecute man to hurt man and even though these scorpions come out the earth and torment men for five whole years in that five years they do not repent they don't stop serving false gods and demons and all this other stuff even though they see that these locusts can even probably talk <laughs> while they torturing them they still turn their back on God so from the beginning of time all the way to the end of time there will always be people 
turning their back on God and not wanting to worship God, even though they can see him, even though they're getting tortured by him, even though they might be able to walk up to him or even come up to the heaven's gate, they still will deny God. So that's why your brother tells you some people were never meant to go to heaven because they will deny God all of their life. Look at these people who are being tormented by these locusts and all they have to do is repent of their sins. Now, we've already went. We're going further, further in the future. As far as our timeline, I don't think we'll see none of this stuff. This is the other people who survive in the world who turn on God. Ours, the first thing that I read, that's where we are. That's where we're going to. That's what you will see in your life. Hold on. What was it? A great earthquake and the sun becomes like black sackcloth and the moon becomes like blood and the stars of the heaven fall to the earth like fig trees drop shook in a in a mighty wind. Now we this generation will see that. You know what I'm saying? But all of this other stuff, this is for further down the generations of the prophecies and what's happening to these people. That's why your brothers say people choose to serve God or they choose to to not serve him even though it might cost them their life and they might suffer so we all have a choice to make family we all have a choice to make will we serve the most high and live bl blissful lives or will we not serve him and be tormented because he wants to torture he wants to punish he wants to hurt those who don't love him and he has every right to do so family he has every right to do so now let's let's continue now this really doesn't apply to us because this is past our timeline. You would have to be mighty stupid. The only thing that you got to do is stop worshiping gods and giving into the your sexual immorality and serving wood and stone and you can be with God. These people are stupid to me. They really are. But even though they go through all this, they still don't serve the most high Yah. Now, okay, let's go. Commanded not to harm the grass, the trees, but to harm man who who did not have the seal of the Most High Yah in their foreheads, but not given power to kill, but to torment them for five months. They caused so much pain to man where they seek to die in these days, but death would not find them and flee from them even through they desire to die. These locusts head, their, their heads, their hair is like a woman their teeth were like a lion's teeth. They had a blessed plate, blessed, uh, breastplate of iron, and the sound of their wings were like the sounds of chariots. Their tails are like scorpions with stingers in their tails to hurt men. Five months, and they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, a Adon, Abdon, Abdon. The six, the six angels sounded the trumpet and released the four great rivers. The angels who bound the rivers of Ephraim, these same Euphrates, I'm sorry, Euphrates, the river of Euphrates, these same four angels prepared for the hour and the month and the year to kill a third of mankind. The number of these armies of horsemen was 200 million. They had breastplates of fire, red, hyphases, blue, and sapphire, yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone that came out of the mouths of the horses. Okay, we got one more family and I'll be done with this. And this is all future prophecies of things that will come to pass to the inhabitants of the people of this earth. If they do not hearken to the Most High Yah and what is He requiring of all of us. And all He asking is us to repent up from our sins and live righteous, righteous, righteously before His eyes and His presence. Okay, the moon, a third of the stars that we read this one, the scales across uh yeah we read that one okay a third of the day did not shine and likewise the night the angel warns the no we did that inhabitants of the earth to of the three trumpet blasts yeah i just gotta find this last place it's only one more family and i'm gonna go ahead and get up off of here man make sure y'all come to this nine o'clock prayer hour to be in assembly with the saints your fellow brothers and sisters 
that is trying to magnify, glorify, worship, and praise the Most High Yah, the Father of all creation, the Father of the heavens and the earth. So I suggest that you come be a part of this prayer hour. Was that it? No, I think this is it right here. No, we did it. The great day of the Lord's wrath. That's and the sixth angel with the earthquake. Yeah, that was one. I'm sorry, family. I'm pretty sure I have one more page up on here. So all my brothers, make sure you come through at this 9 o'clock prayer hour. Peace and blessings be unto you in Yeshua precious name. You know your brother, I really appreciate you saying prayers on the behalf of your people and then come being assembled with your brothers and sisters who love the Lord the way that you do and is trying to make a change and a difference in this life for our people. Now, I can't expect everybody to be awoken tomorrow. But I can expect for you to listen to some of the words that's being said for you to make a life changing action on your life to be with the most high's will on your life so i thank you and i just ask that you come with a humble heart a heart that's submissive and no faking no faking when you come to this nine o'clock prayer i will come with your problems come with your woes come with a, a submissive heart to show your father that you are willing to try okay we did that one i was, I was pretty sure it was only two it was only two of them family it was and that was the future prophecies of things that will come to pass and remember what your brother said now all of these things like all them prophecies that you had heard it's so many different more we just went through excuse me we just went through a little bit of them we didn't even go through all of them. we didn't even go through a third of them but you've seen all the horrible things that will be taking place on this earth it's a lot of bad things that's supposed to come and supposed to happen. It is our job to prepare ourselves and to be ready to endure to the end. Because what if the Lord said, he said, he said that he is only going to give you the crown of life. If you make it through this family and from what you've seen, a third, a third of the sun being blocked out. You already know people is going to lose their damn mind. The moon being like blood. You already know people is going to lose their mind. Um wormwood coming and destroying a third of the the water that's on earth people is going to die that's why i say when the lord comes even before the lord comes all these different seals a lot of people is going to die and you know that it is right we got eight billion people on the face of this earth and the way of the numbers from what the father is saying he has to annihilate a lot of people so as you look at this world and the people who live therein I don't even think a billion people is going to be left after the father is finished with his judgment on this place. So it is up to you, my brothers and sisters, to do what you got to do is right in this life. And even if you did not see any of these things come to pass, what did your Lord said? You have to endure. That means to live a righteous life. Follow your laws, your commandments, your statutes, all of those things that the Most High is asking of you. And to be a righteous man or woman in the duration of your race, of your life on this earth. So your brother, I got to get all, I got to go ahead and get up out of here. I already invested a whole hour time with you. I just ask that my brothers and sisters take advantage in being at this nine o'clock prayer hour and come get you some good praise time in to be with your family. To be able to magnify, to edify your father, to come cast your problems at the Lord's feet. To ask the Holy Spirit about things that's been hiding from you and you're not able to understand on yourself. If you want to be awakened, I'm pretty sure that the Holy Spirit will wake you up. But just by listening to things that were said for this day is enough to wake a lot of my brothers and sisters up. So make sure you come and be involved at this 9 o'clock prayer hour from first to last, family. From first to last, I don't... I don't care where you at. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care if you're in your car. I don't care if you're trying to make it home. I don't care if you're at the bus, if you're at the store. At this 9 o'clock prayer hour, you can steal yourself for an instant in time and throw up these prayers to your father about anything that afflicts you, that affects you, and most importantly, 
to gain this relationship, this submission that, that you need with your father and to say prayers on the behalf of your fellow brothers and sisters who are lost in this world and need somebody to pray for them. So some life changing events can happen for them in their life. Now, this has been your brother Jehoshaphat. Peace and blessings be upon you all in Yeshua precious name for he is the Lord and he lives family. Come make sure you be involved at this nine o'clock prayer hour.